بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین صلى الله عليه وسلم على محمد و آل طيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد لا سيما بقيه الله في الارضين اجل الله تعالى فرجك الشريف اللهم اخرجني من ظلمات الوحي واخرني من نور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا ابواب رحمتك وانشر علينا قضاء عظمك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين وي ويل استدي ان شاء الله ذا سيكشن اون الاجتهاد والتقليد تقليد تقليد الاجتهاد والتقليد from the book اصول الاستنباط this book is a famous book and it is used as also a textbook in some places about 23-22 years ago uh, we started this book as one of the textbooks on Usul, the whole book. And you will be able to find the whole text also as PDF online. But uh, we have also uh, duplicated the uh, part on Ijtihad wa Taqlid. So hopefully everyone should have a copy of it. And if you want, as I said, you can find it on the internet. Uh, the author is Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Naqi Al Haydari. And Ayatollah Khui Rahmatullah Alai has a foreword, and I also Sayyid Hibatuddin Shahrastani has an introduction. It covers all different discussions on usul al fiqh. It's like something uh, like al mujaz that we have studied, but maybe a little less detailed than al mujaz. But uh, because in the in al mujaz there was no section on ishtihad wa taqlid, so I thought we should study it. And if inshallah this finishes, then. Uh, we will have a section on some of the sources that non-Shia Muslims follow, like Qiyas, Istihsan, Masalih, Mursaleh, Fatwa Zara'i, Fatwa Zara'i, inshallah we'll discuss them as well. From the same book. From the same book. So, first we start with definition of Ijtihad. Usul al Istanbad by Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Naqi al Haydari. The whole book is also available online. English or Arabic? It's in Arabic. So, first we start with the definition of ijtihad. In its literal sense, al ijtihad comes from juhd. Juhd means efforts. Yeah, ijtihad means you do your best, you try hard. So he says, Al Ijtihad of Filloga Uba Bazlul Majhud Fi Talab Shay to spend your maximum energy in doing something or seeking something. Uh, so if you really hard, uh, work hard, that's Ijtihad. You remember that famous hadith from Amirul Mu'minin. Uh, 
uh, when he talked about his own uh, zohd and ascetic life, then he said, "Ennakum la taqdiruna ala dalek," or something like this. You are not able to do like me, but a'inuni bi dhara'in wa ijtihad wa iffatin wa sadad. At least help me by taqwa and ijtihad and chastity and being firm in your decision, you know, make it proper and your efforts. So ijtihad means working hard. If we don't work hard, if we don't make efforts, we will not be successful. So this is the literal meaning. But in its technical meaning, in fiqh, when juries say ijtihad and mujtahid for the person who has ijtihad, what do they mean? They don't mean just someone who makes efforts or tries hard. They mean someone who makes efforts in understanding Islamic rulings from their sources. So, ma'arifatu istinbatil ahkam shari'iyah min adillatiha. You know how to infer, how to draw Islamic rulings from its their sources. Okay? Al Ahkam Shar even Adilatah. Because if you just know Ahkam based on Risale of your Mujtahid, you know Ahkam, but this is not Ijtihad. Ijtihad is to do Istinbat from main sources, from Quran, Hadith, Sunnah, or Ijma or Aql. You yourself can draw out, you can infer the ahkam. And in some books, also, they say, istifra'ul wus'ah. means you do your maximum uh, effort. So, ma'rifatu istinbat al ahkam al shari'iyah min adillataha. So, who is mujtahid? Mujtahid is the one who is faqih, who is a jurist, who has the faculty, the quwwa for istinbat. It's not just a matter of knowing fatwas by memory from someone else. No. You should yourself go back to the sources and bring out Islamic rulings. Then, Ijtihad is divided into two parts. You might have heard. They say Ijtihad mutlaq, Ijtihad mutajazzi, or Al Mujtahidul Mutlaq, Al Mujtahidul Mutajazzi. If someone is Mujtahid in all sections of fiqh, he can find out Islamic rulings in all abwab. Whether it be, for example, in Salah, Taharat, Hajj, Ejare, Bay, Kava, all sections of fiqh. This is Mujtahid Mutlaq, like our Maraja. Our Maraja are able to do Ijtihad in all sections of fiqh. We have also Al Mujtahidul Mutajazzi. Mutajazzi comes from Jews. So this is someone who is mujtahid but in a particular field. For example, someone who has worked for a few years on Tahara. And now in Tahara, we can trust him and he can you know, trust his own opinion because it's, he's able to go back to the sources and find out Islamic rulings. So he's called Al Mujtahidul Mutajassi. Or suppose someone wants to do um, judgment, Qadi. Normally we say Qadi has to be Mujtahid. But uh, it's difficult to get enough Mujtahid Mutlaq. 
So some say if it is Mujtahid Mutajazi, it's also okay. Is it clear? Yes, one question here. Yes. Uh, we have Mujtahid Mutajazi. Well, are we allowed to have the cleat of two no. Mujtahid? Then what's the point of uh, Mutajazi? No. For, this is different from Taqlid. Oh, it's not Maraja Taqlid, it's just Mujtahid. For, Mujtahid. Inshallah, Taqlid is just us. Awesome. This is for himself. Can he rely on his own understanding if he is mutajazi? He say yes. Because if he has come to this understanding and he has ilm that this is the hukm of God, he follow his judgment. In another section he is not mujtahid. Okay, in that section he has to do taqlid or ihtiyat. But in this section, he is mujtahid and he can rely on his understanding. Yes. Sheikh, mutajazi, if he carries on, he becomes. Uh, yes. Mutajazi. Yes. So, actually, some people who say we may not have ishtihad al mutajazi, uh, he says, actually, we have because gradual process. So, it's not that uh, someone all of a sudden in all fiqh becomes mujtahid. He starts with some sections and then he expands <coughs> so ijtihad is either mutlaq or mutajazi means either it is uh, comprehensive or it is partial, partial. If someone is mujtahid and his ijtihad is mutlaq, it's comprehensive. Huwa al-arifu bistinbaati jami' al-ahkam al-shari'ah min adillatiha al-jaliyah. He is the one who has ability to draw out Islamic rulings, all of them, jami'ah, tahara, salat, zakat, hajj, sawb, nikah, ijara, mu'amala, qadha, diyat, hudud, all Islamic rulings he can draw out from its clear sources. Why we add the modifier jaliya, clear, because sometimes it's not the fault of mujtahid. We don't have clear reason here. And therefore mujtahid may not have fatwa. May do ihtiyat. Okay? So if we say someone is mujtahid mutlaq because he knows all ahkam, don't say, no, this person doesn't know some ahkam. He has ihtiyatat. We say that's not his problem. If there are enough reasons and sources, he can make ijtihad. He can make istinbat. Okay? So, al mujtahidu bil ijtihad al mutlaq huwa al arifu bi istinbat jami' al ahkam al shar'iyya min adillatiha al jaliyya. He can do istinbat. He knows how to infer, how to draw out. All Islamic rulings, all Shari rulings from its clear sources. At Tajazi huwa al arifu means al mujtahidu bil ijtihad mutajazi. Al arifu bistinbat ba'dha kadalik. يعني باستنباط بعض الأحكام الشرعية أن أدلة الجلية. Why we said جلية؟ إنما قلنا الجلية لإخراج الأدلة المشكلة. Because sometimes there are sources which are very difficult. التي تتدافع عند المجتهد. There are sources that are difficult. And they may conflict, for example, and Mujtahid cannot make up his mind. It's not a problem in his uh, skills or talents or experiences. It's a problem 
of lack of enough evidence. So Mujtahid in this case then has difficulty in issuing fatwa and may just have hesitation, yata'amman. Yastashkil, yani it find, he finds it difficult, but yata'amman means he has hesitation. But la yadurru dhalika fitjtihadihi zahiran. But it seems that it's not harming his power of ijtihad, his ability of ijtihad. Why? لأنه يصدق عليه عرفا أنه عارف باستحكام الأحكام. Because according to the orf, according to common sense, according to the public opinion, we can say he knows how to do istanbat. When he can do istanbat of most of أحكام. Yeah. So don't say he has some احتياطات. If he can do most of the ahkam, they say he knows. The rest is the problem of lack of evidence. وَلَأَنَّ الْقُصُورِ لَيْسَ مِنْ جَهَتَهِ إِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنْ إِشْكَالِ الْعَدِلَّةِ There is no shortcoming or deficiency on his side. The problem is that our resources, our references are not clear. <coughs> Question. Are these two types of ijtihad possible at all? Is it possible that someone can do ijtihad in all fiqh? And second, is it possible to be mujtahid only in some issues? So there are two issues. One is, can someone be mujtahid in all fiqh? We say yes. Our maraja are mujtahid in all fiqh. Question two, is it possible that someone is only mujtahid in some? So if he's in some, he must be in all. Why is he only some? The answer is yes, possible, because it's a gradual process. When someone learns, then little by little, he starts doing ishtahad from one section, he goes to another section, and then the whole fiqh. So, إِنَّهُ لَا إِشْكَالَ وَلَا رَيْبَةِ فِي إِمْكَانِ الْإِجْتِحَادِ الْأَوَّلِ There is no doubt that the first type of ishtahad is possible. What is al ishtahadul awal? Mutlaq. Al mutlaq. Fi hadhi al usur in our age, although fiqh has been expanded a lot, but still we have maraja and fuqaha who can do ishtahad in all above. Kama la ishkala fi imkan al thani wa tahaqqi. In the same way, there is no problem in the possibility of having ishtahad. Mutajazzi. لأن المطلق لا يمكن حصوله دفعة. Because اجتهاد مطلق doesn't happen at once. دفعة means at once. بل شيئا Little by little, gradually. And this is the meaning of tajazi. We mean that he first starts becoming mujtahid in one section and then to, he goes to others. Fashayan, fashayan. Means gradually, yes, little by little. So. Also, you know, in Usul al we say zawahir al alfaz are hujjah. Are they hujja for only mujtahid mutlaq or they are hujja salam salam or they are hujja for everyone they are hujja for everyone wala anna zawahir al alfaz hujjatun fi haqq kull arif biha any person who knows this zawahir it's hujja for him وَحُجِّيَّةُ الْآيَاتِ وَالْأَخْبَارِ مُطْلَقَةٌ لِكُلَّ عَارِفٍ بِهَا Also, verses of the Qur'an and Ahadith are hujjah for any person who has ma'rifah. When you read a hadith about wuzu, is the validity of al-ma'na al-zahiri for this hadith about wuzu based on you being mujtahid in kitab al-qadha'iza? It's not. 
قاية الأمر yes understanding hadith about wuzu does not need to be mujtahid in another section yes the maximum is that you have to study different sections of fiqh and ahadith about different sections so that if there is an evidence in another place that may affect your understanding of this one you know so you should know anything about tahara even if this thing is mentioned in a, another chapter of hadith because you know in the past uh, sometimes what they did when they wanted to classify hadith maybe they have broken hadith they have done taqtiq for example a hadith was long one section was about marriage they put it in the kitab al nikah another section was about wuzu they put it in tahara okay so maybe there is an evidence in the section on nikah which can help us understand the section on tahara okay and this was the idea of Ayatollah al-Uzma Burujirdi when he started a very massive project of Jami' Ahadith al-Shia. And one reason for that was to collect all Ahadith and bring all the broken parts together so that you can have it from the beginning up to the end in one place. In any case, <coughs> It is possible to be mujtahid mutajazzi and for understanding one part you don't need to understand the rest but if in the rest of fiqh or rest of you know chapters of books of hadith there is something that can bear on your understanding of this part you have to know it so it can be mujtahid in kitabul salat but if in Kitab al-Hajj there is something about Salat, you must know it. Maybe that would be muta'aras for this one. Maybe there would be no conflict. You have to know it. So, if you know anything about Salat, that's fine. غَايَةَ الْأَمْرِ يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى الْبَحْثِ عَنِ الْمُعَارِضَاتِ لَهَا Just you should look for those things that may contradict or conflict and change the meaning. والمفروض أن المتجازي متمكن من ذلك. And our assumption is that مشتهد متجازي is able to understand anything about salat scattered in different parts. Now, question: Is fatwa of مشتهد متجازي valid for himself? Can he rely on his own fatwa when he is متجازي? The answer is yes, of course. Because if he's mutajazi, he means he has ability to understand the ruling. When he understands al-ilmu hujjatun, al-yaqinu hujjatun zatan. Anyone who knows, who should follow his understanding. Yes. By the time when he is mujtahid and mutajazi, and he can follow his own fatwa from those particular places, but at the same time he is mukallid to someone else. Why? Sorry? Why? In another part. In another part. Yes, another So part. in that case, basically, he's following two mushtahid. No problem. In two awesome. different sections. Okay. No, but for example, if in the same section which where he is mushtahid himself, and his marajat taqib, he's got a different ruling in there, and he's got different, whom should he no, follow? No, because he's mushtahid, so he knows what is the ruling. Then there is no chance for taqlid. So, okay. Taqlid is for someone who doesn't know. Mushtahid knows. Even one, you know that if you are mushtahid, you don't need to follow a'lam. A'lam is for other people. The one who is mushtahid and understands the ruling in this way, even if he has become mushtahid just now, he follows his opinion. But I've seen many uh, mutahid children who are mutahid children, but they don't follow the true marid. They would follow the alam. They won't. They won't be very knowledgeable like uh, either the people like him. But they do the takbir of uh, the Imam of the time. If they are really mushtahid and mutajazi, 
and they don't want to follow their own opinion, it's better they do ihtiyat. Because it's very problematic also to say that you follow a mujtahid when you are yourself a mujtahid. Yes. If they are Mujtahid and Mujtahid of one part, yes. they know that they could be stuck in other sections that could affect their part. He must know that. He must know anything that is related to that part. Because if you have really done research, you know, because those who are Mujtahid and Mujtahid, their books are available, you know, so you know anyone who has worked on uh, Kitab Salat, for example, what mm. things they have referred to. If you are really expert in that field, you know. And if you don't know that, you cannot be much data that. Then you are not. Yeah. Yes. Can I ask my heart, please? Yes. The Islamic Ayyamah can be bait, alayhi salam. Can all Sahabi, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has a kitab. For example, kitab Ta'is for Salah, kitab Fulan for Salam. Kutub, Rewai, Fakat. هو روايات أهل البيت هناك نعم. كتاب خاص بالصلاة مثلا أو بالصوم نعم. هل كان الأئمة عليهم السلام يشجعون الاختصاص أو يشجعون التجزؤ في العلم يعني إنما كان المسألة مسألة تجميع الروايات ما كان هناك تشجيع على تركيز Sorry, I must be careful. If the, if the idea was to collect hadith, so it was okay. Any hadith that you come across, you put them together. Uh, even sometimes they were not classifying them, they were not organizing them. So someone had asked, you know, there were 400 usul. In their ass, they had hadith about different subjects. But sometimes imams were trying to train experts like expert on fiqh, expert on kalam. There, they were encouraging them to specialize. So, so someone was very good for uh, kalam. Someone was very good, for example, for fiqh, for rawayat, and they were known for that. So, question. ثُمَّ هَلْ تَكُونُ فَتْوَى حُجَّةً عَلَى نَفْسِهِ would be the fatwa of Mujtahid Mutajazi valid hujja for himself? He can rely on his own opinion. We are not talking about other people doing taqlid. We are talking about him following his own understanding, relying on his own opinion. Al Azharu Al Hujjiya. The author says the stronger position is that it is actually valid. Why? Because according to his own opinion, he knows the hook. He has done the ishtahat. He knows this is what religion wants. And the one who knows the ruling, he has to do what? He has to practice. فَعَلَى هَذَا لَا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى رُجُوعِهِ إِلَى الْمُجْتَهِدِ الْمُطْلَقِ فِي جَوَازَ عَمَلِهِ بِفَتْوَى نَفْسِهِ So he doesn't need to go to Mujtahid al-Mutlaq and get permission from him to follow his own opinion. Because if this is his opinion, it means he, he knows. فَقَوْلُ بَعْضِهِمْ إِنَّ الْمُتَجَزِّيهِ Muhalun an ya'rifa hukma nafsi. Some said Mujtahid Mutajazi cannot know what he should do. Ba'idun zahira. This is very unlikely. It seems to be very unlikely. Ba'dama kanat khitabatu al ahkam mutawajjihatan ila nas ammata. The rulings that we have, the verses or hadith about. Islamic rulings, they don't address only Mujtahid Mutlaq. For everyone. Mutawajjahatun ila nas ammatan. 
they address everyone, not mujtahid mutlaq only. فَكُلُّ أَحَدٍ عَرَفَ حُكْمَهُ Anyone who knows his wazifa, the ruling that applies to him, has to implement it, has to obey it. يَلْزَمُهُ الْإِمْتِثَابِ Another question. What about his hukuma? Because mujtahid has different functions. One is understanding fatwa, understanding the opinion of uh, sharia about something. Another function of mujtahid is he acts as hakim shara. He issues verdicts. That is in detail, that is in particular. You know, when a particular thing happens, for example, to declare that tomorrow is the month of Ramadan, or tomorrow is Eid, this is hok. Hok means different from fatwa. Fatwa is general. Hok means about a particular case. Amma nufuzu hukumatehi is his governance. If his hukuma, yeah, like rule, is that also something that is accepted and has effect? فَالظَّاهِرُ adam No, it seems that he has no authority in that sense. لِذُهُورَ أَخْبَارَ نَسْبِ الْفَقِيْهِ حَاكِمًا لِذُهُورَ أَخْبَارَ نَسْبِ الْفَقِيْهِ حَاكِمًا فِي الْمُسْتَهِدِ الْمُتْلَقِ يعني ظهور في المجتهد المتلق Because those hadiths which say that faqih has to be hakim its apparent meaning is which type of faqih? faqih mutlaq naam la yab'udu shumulaha lil mujtahid fi mu'zam al ahkam al ammat al balwa yes it's possible that we say Hukuma is for the faqih that even if he doesn't know masail in all sections, at least he knows all masail which are mubtalabih. Masail that people normally face. From tahara, from salat, from ajara, nikah. He knows all the masail which are mubtalabih. Maybe every person faces few hundred masail. He knows that. He doesn't need to know few thousand masail. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. What does means penetrate. But here nofuz or hukumatei means that his hukuma be effective, has power. And balwa? Balwa from ibtila means to be facing something, something that you go through and you have to face it. The second issue is at taqlid. So Alhamdulillah, we finish ishtahat, still we have masail, but just the definition. And the next is at taqlid. What is taqlid? Taqlid in Loga in literal sense, comes from Ghilada. Ghilada is the ring or necklace, yeah? For the? Necklace. Necklace. For the, for example, sometimes women, they put jewelries. And sometimes can be used for other reasons. Anything that put, is put here. For animals as well, like? It can be also for controlling animals. Anything that is for neck. Okay? Uh, yes. This is the literal meaning. Taqlid 
technically means we put gelada on someone else. Means for our rulings, we put responsibility on someone else. Ah, that's a, it's been related very wrongly on the verb. Yeah, this is taqlid. So taqlid is a kind of facility, a kind of exemption. Instead of you being either mujtahid or doing ihtiyat, which both are difficult. To become mujtahid, you have to study 20, 30 years at least. To want to do ihtiyat means always you have to take the difficult or most difficult option. So Sharia says you can put the responsibility on someone else's neck if he is happy to do so. So therefore, we have to be very grateful to Maraja that they have undertaken this responsibility that for themselves and for us, they have undertaken the position of Marja'iyah. So, at taqlid wa ja'alu غير المجتهد عمله موافقا لفتوى المجتهد في الأحكام الشرية. Someone who is not مجتهد makes his practice, his action according to the fatwa of مجتهد in religious rulings. So تقليد for me means that for example I want to say prayer. I say my prayer according to the fatwa of Mustahid. So, Taqlid is something that happens at the time of action. Muqarinun lil amal. Because as we said, Taqlid is to do, to do your action in compliance with fatwa. So, Taqlid is Muqarinun lil amal. وَلَا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَىٰ سَبْقِهِ عَلَىٰهِ It doesn't need to precede action. So you don't need that first choose and say this is my mujtahid and this is the fatwa that he has about salat for example ayat and then when the time of ayat comes. No, as soon as when the time of salat ayat comes you say prayer according to fatwa of this marja you are doing his taqlid. There is no doubt that taqlid is necessary Taqlid is necessary for someone who cannot right now do ijtihad nor ihtiyad. He cannot do ijtihad because he has not studied properly or you know has not studied for a long time or he has been Busy, whatever. And ihtiyat is also not possible. It's difficult for him. Why we should do taqlid? Apart from a hadith that inshallah we will mention and ayat of the Quran that we will mention, apart from all that, this is siratul uqallah. That someone who is not an expert should refer to experts. لأنه ظاهرا من باب الرجوع إلى أهل الخبرة because تقليد seems to be like referring to the experts وعليه سيرة الأقلاء في جميع شهونهم وأحوالهم أقلاء also have such practice that in all their affairs in دنيا and آخرة in دين and دنيا they refer to experts. بَلْ لَوْ لَا لَخْتَلَّ النِّظَامُ الْعَالَمُ Had it not been that taqlid is possible, the system in the world would be collapsed. لَأَنَّ كُلَّ فَرْدٍ فَرْدٍ مِنَ النَّاسِ لَا يَجْمَعُ أُلُومَ الدِّينِ وَالدُّنْيَا Because it's not that every person himself knows everything about dunya and akhirah. So our knowledge is not sufficient. But we still need these sciences. 
فلولا رجوع غير العالم بها الى العالم بها لتعطل نظام البشريه والاحكام الشرعيه had it not been that the one who is not alim should refer to alim in these ahkam the whole system of humanity and rulings would collapse so ukala refer to experts pardon So Ogalar refer to experts. In the case of Fiqh, Uqala tell us we should refer to Uqaha and Shari has also endorsed it. If you say how, where did Shari approve it? We say there are different Awamir commands. There are different texts. For example, we have hadith that praise ulama and say that innahum warathatul anbiya they inherit from the prophets or awamir ruju' ilayhim they command to refer ulama wal akhdha anhum was su'al minhum refer to refer to ulama and ask questions from them or hadith that commands to do tafaqqu for learning and teaching or in quran we have ayatun نافر لولا نفر من كل فرقة منهم طائفة ليتفقوا في الدين وليندروا قومهم إذا رجعوا إليهم لعلهم يحضرون and people also should afterward be warned or the ayah of فاسألوا أهل الذكر although some people say أهل الذكر or أهل البيت but it seems to be also possible to understand from this that we must refer to the people who have knowledge there are also hadith I mentioned this hadith, it's a beautiful hadith from Ahlul Bayt about Ijtihad or uh, more precisely about Taqlid because the focus is on people referring to them. Al Awal Maruviya min Qawla Abdul Aziz ibn al Mahdi lil Imam alayhi salam. The narrator who was Abdul Aziz. Ask Imam alayhi salam, Rubama ahtaju wa lastu alqaq fi kulli waqt. I sometimes need you, but I cannot always find you. Afayunus ibn Abdul Rahman, thiqatun akhudu anhum alim adini. When I cannot have access to you, is Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman reliable, honest, that I can take from him the teachings of my religion? Imam Ali Salam said, yes. If you look at this question and answer, you see that the one who asked, it seems that he knows he can refer to Thaqah. Does he ask whether he is Thaqah or not? In his mind, he knew that he can refer to the reliable person. Thaqah means honest, reliable, trustworthy. And Imam Ali Salam also approved that. So... It's possible. The second hadith. Imam alayhi salam in writing replied to a question. Someone had asked him whom we can trust in our faith. Someone who can be trusted in his faith. Imam alayhi salam said, اِعْتَمِدَا فِي دِينَكُمْ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسِنِّنْ فِي حُبِّنَا كَثِيرِ الْقَدَمِ فِي أَمْنَا In your religion, your faith, trust any person who is musin, who is old, and he has spent his life in loving us, and he makes lots of efforts in our way. 
In another hadith, Sa'alahu ibn Abi Ya'fur amman yurja'u ilayh idha ahtaja aw su'ila al-mas'ala or yarja'u ilayh. Ibn Ya'fur asked Imam al to whom he should refer when he himself needs questions or people ask him questions and he needs answer. Imam said, فَمَا يَمْنَعُكَ عَنِ الثَّقَفِي What does stop you to refer to Thaqafi, which means Muhammad ibn Muslim and Thaqafi. Imam al salam said to Shu'ayb al Aqraquqi, Aqraquqi, sorry, Aqraquqi, yes, yes, my font is very small. Aqraquqi, alayka bil asadi. One page is blank. No. Page 275. 37. It's a village in the north of Baghdad. It's still available. It's still available. Thank you, yes. So this person must be from that village. So Imam told him, Yani Abu Basir. You see, Imam, Imams referred people to those who had knowledge. Or Ali ibn al Musayyab, Imam alayhi salam said, Alayka bi Zakariya ibn Adam. This Zakariya ibn Adam is buried in home. He's a very great personality. Al Ma'moon ala deen wa dunya, someone that you can trust him in religious affairs and in worldly affairs. Imam alayhi salam said to Abu Nabi Taglab, Ejilis fi masjid al Madina, wa aftin nas, sit in the masjid of Madina and give fatwa for people. Fa enni uhibbu an yura fi shi'ati mithluk. I love in my Shia people like you to be found, to be seen. Means I love more people like you among my Shia who can sit in masjid and give fatwa. There was a tawqeeq from Imam Mahdi al Jalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif for Ishaad ibn Ya'qub. Tawqeeq means a written message with signature coming from Imam alayhi salam. Some of the things we have from Imam Mahdi in the time of Qaybat al Sukra are in the form of tawqeeq. Tawqeeq means signature, but here means written message. So he asked questions about things which were difficult for him. And Imam alayhi salam said, وَأَمَّا الْحَوَادِثُ الْوَاقِعَةِ فَرْجِعُوا فِيهَا إِلَىٰ رُوَاتِ أَحَادِيثِنَا فَإِنَّهُمْ حُجَّتِي عَلَيْكُمْ وَأَنَا حُجَّةُ اللَّهِ When new events happen, refer to those who narrate our hadith. They are my hujja over you and I am hujja of Allah. Also in tafsir of tafsir which is mansub to Imam Askari, we have فَأَمَّا مَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْفُقَهَا سَائِنًا لِنَفْسِهِ حَافِظًا لِدِينِهِ مُخَالِفًا عَلَى هَوَاهِ مُتِيعًا لَأَمْرِ مَوْلَاهِ فَلِلْعَوَامِ أَنْ يُقَلَّدُوهِ A famous hadith that any faqih who is sa'inan l-nafsi, he protects and saves himself, means he doesn't let himself to go to bad things and bad actions and be destroyed. Hafidhan l he saves and protects his faith. Mukhalifan ala hawa, he rejects and repels his lower desires. Muti'an la amr He obeys the command of his master, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then the Prophet and Imam. Falil'awami an yuqalladu. It's for the lay people to do taqlid of him. Uh, why we say it, it is for lay people to do taqlid? An obvious thing. Like, uh, why we don't say it's obligatory? We don't say fa'al al-awam. We say fa'al al-awam. 
and you can't let go. It could be among the Imam, is it possible for someone to be a mujtahid and mujtahid as well? It's a facility. You say, you can do taqlid. If you don't want to do taqlid, okay, do ishtahad or ihtiyat. So it's a facility that you have this option of doing taqlid. So one of the two things is wajib. Either mujtahid or either taqlid. Or muhtah. Or ihtiyat. Three, Three so things. We can't have the fourth. No. These sets of hadith. If you consider them all together, it gives certainty about our point that we wanted to prove it. So it gives you certain conclusion. Even if in some of these hadiths there is weakness in the chain of narration. Or some of them, it's dalala is not very clear. Because there are so many hadiths that even if some of them are weak, it doesn't change the overall conclusion. لَأَنَّهَا مُنْجَبِرَةٌ بِعَمَلِ الْعُلَمَاءِ بِهَا وَمَنْهَجِ الصُّلَحَاءِ عَلَيْهَا وَمَعَ تَعْئِيدَهَا بِسِيرَةِ الْعُقَلَاءِ عَلَى الرُّجُوءِ إِلَى أَحْلِ الْخِبْرَةِ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِ إِطْبَاقُ الْبَشَرِ قَاطِبَةً So, this weakness, even if we accept some of these hadiths are not sahih, this weakness is compensated by a few things. One is that umala, ulama have acted upon this. Righteous people have acted in this way. They have asked people for their opinion, people who are experts. Uqala also confirmed this. Uqala referred to khubre, to the experts. And etbaq al-bashar, there is consensus of whole humanity that you can and you should refer to experts when you don't have expertise. So, there is no doubt about possibility of ijtihad uh, and referring to mujtahideen. Inshallah, we have very good discussion and that is is it necessary to go to the most knowledgeable mujtahid or it is just possible to go to mujtahid? Is taqlid al-a'lam wajib or it is ja'iz? This is a good discussion that you are going, inshallah, to have. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil